When it comes to must-have tools, at least in my shop, diagonal cutting pliers definitely makes the list. So the question is, is that $8 pair of pliers just as good as the $65 snap-ons? Well, let's find out. In the first test, we'll see how much squeezing force it takes to cut through a 16-penny nail. Then we'll see how the pliers perform cutting through a deck screw. Not all of the pliers will survive cutting through a drill bit. Things really begin to come apart when the pliers cut through a socket adapter. At a price of only $8, the least expensive brand it will be testing is made by Illinois Industrial Tools. Drop forged, heat treated steel. Precision machine jaws, we're going to test them. The Illinois Industrial Tool pliers are made in China. The axle joint on the pliers is very loose. When there's a lot of wobble, the cutters just don't line up and you get very inconsistent results. The pliers are very light at 215.3 grams. The average adult male has a gripping strength of around 100 pounds. So it really helps to have pliers that are designed to offer the user a leverage advantage. In the first test, we'll see how much squeezing force it takes to cut through a 16-penny nail. Once the pliers are clamped onto the holder, I'll slide the front piece with the two bolts towards the pliers. The two bolts will hold the nail in place against the cutters to allow for maximum leverage. The hydraulic press will be applying force to the very end of the handle. To keep the nail from becoming a projectile once it's cut off, I'll attach some locking pliers to the end of the nail. I can't place the nail all the way inward against the pivot point since the Illinois Industrial Tool Cutters don't extend inward to the pivot point. You'll need a very strong hand if you use the Illinois Industrial Tool Pliers to cut through a nail at 195 pounds. At a price of $11, the second least expensive brand we'll be testing is made by Cobalt. All the brands of diagonal cutting pliers that we'll be testing are 8 inches in length except for the Cobalt brand which is 7 inches. Durable chrome nickel steel. Hardened precision machine jaws last longer and grip better. High leverage design. Duction hardened cutting edges stay sharper longer. The Cobalt brand is made in China. Very nice tight fit with the Cobalt. The Cobalt pliers are a lot heavier than the Illinois Industrial Tool pliers at 301.8 grams. Even though the shorter handles of the Cobalt offer less levers than the Illinois Industrial Tools brand, the Cobalt still performed a lot better at 158 pounds. At a price of $15, the third least expensive brand we'll be testing is made by Craftsman. Compound action designed for increased cutting force. Drop forward steel for strength and durability. Induction hardened. Cutting edges stay sharper longer. The Craftsman brand is made in China. Moving the handles back and forth, there's quite a bit of wobble with the Craftsman. The Craftsman is the heaviest yet at 317.3 grams. The Craftsman's unique design gives the user a bit of a leverage advantage and it did the best yet at 102 pounds. At a price of $16 is the Doyle brand, which is sold at Harbor Freight. Cuts ACSR, screws, nails, and most hardened wire. Rust protection reduces corrosion and increased tool life. The Doyle brand is made in Taiwan. Riveted joint for smooth action with no wobble. Unfortunately, just like the Craftsman, the Doyle has quite a bit of wobble in the joint. The Doyle is pretty light at 275 grams. The Doyle did even better than the Craftsman at 96 pounds and moves into the lead. At a price of $18 is this DeWalt Compound Action Diagonal Pliers. 70% more cutting power, we're going to test that. Guaranteed tough. The DeWalt brand is made in China. The DeWalt has a nice tight fit. The DeWalt is even lighter than the Doyle at 253 grams. The jaw opening on the DeWalt is pretty limited, so the nail is too large to rest against the pivot point. The Dewalt did nearly the same as the Craftsman and the Doral at 108 pounds. Also at a price of $18 is this Irwin brand, the same price as the Dewalt pliers. Nickel chromium steel pliers construction. Induction hardened cutting edges stay sharper longer. The Irwin brand is made in China. The Irwin is definitely better than the Doral, but unfortunately there's quite a bit of wobble. The Irwin is the second heaviest yet at 308.5 grams. And the Irwin did by far the best yet at only 78 pounds and takes the lead from Doyle. At a price of $21 is this Channel Lock brand. Precision machine knife and anvil style cutting edges to ensure perfect mating and superior cutting edge life. Channel Lock uses a high carbon C1080 steel for superior performance on the job. The Channel Lock brand is made in USA. Very good craftsmanship with the Channel Locks, there's absolutely no wobble. The Channel Locks weigh nearly the same as the Cobalt at 299.4 grams. The Channel Locks are designed to offer a leverage advantage and it takes the lead from Irwin at only 73 pounds. Very impressive. At a price of $24 is this CS Osborne brand. These drop forge nippers are ideal for cutting hog rings or wire. The CS Osborne pliers are made in USA. Unfortunately, the CS Osborne is not quite as tight as some of the other brands. The CS Osborne is by far the heaviest yet at 361.7 grams. And the CS Osborne required a lot of force to cut through the nail at 184 pounds. At a price of $26 is this Milwaukee brand. Up to two times more cuts. Iron carbide edge. Engineered by Milwaukee Tool, professionally made in China. Nice tight fit with the Milwaukee. The Milwaukee weighs 282.5 grams. And the Milwaukee needed 163 pounds of force to cut through the nail. At a price of $27 is this Klein Tools brand. Induction hardened cutting knives for long life. High leverage design has 36% more cutting power. Hot riveted joint for smooth action and no handle wobble. The Klein Tools brand is made in USA. The Klein Tools is not quite as tight as some of the other brands. 
The Klein Tools brand weighs 290 grams. Klein Tools perform much better than average at 89 pounds. At a price of $28 is this Southwire brand. 15% easier cuts. Fire rivet technology for smooth opening. Fire edge induction hardened blades cuts nails, screws, and ACSR wire. The Southwire brand is made in China. The Southwire is not quite as tight as some of the other brands. The Southwire pliers weighed 316.7 grams. The Southwire performed slightly better than the Klein Tools brand at 85 pounds. At a price of $33 is this Wea brand. Dynamic joint, 40% less effort. Low wear lap joint, riveted and able to withstand high levels of load. 64 HRC induction hardened. Manufactured with global components in Vietnam. There's no wobble with the Wea. The Wea brand weighs 299.3 grams. The Wea performed better than average at 103 pounds. Also at a price of $33 is this Knipex brand. High cutting performance with minimum effort due to optimum coordination of cutting edge angle and transmission ratio. High leverage diagonal cutters for very tough continuous use. Induction hardened cutting edges. The Knipex brand is made in Germany. Nice and tight fit with the Knipex. The Knipex weighs 296.5 grams. And it took 116 pounds for the Knipex pliers to cut through the nails. At a price of $44 is this Mac Tools brand. Heat treated to provide consistent performance. Forced alloy steel for durability. I was unable to find information on where the Mac Tools brand is made. Unfortunately, the Mac Tools just does not provide a very tight fit. The Mac Tools weighs nearly the same as the Channel Locks at 299.5 grams. And the Mac Tools brand cut through the nail at 157 pounds. And the most expensive brand we'll be testing at $65 is made by Snap-on. Small joint in combination with longer handles increase leverage by 19%. Parallel cutting edges are engineered to provide repeated cuts for hard wire and even spring steel. The Snap-on brand is made in USA. Nice and tight fit with the Snap-on. The Snap-on is the second heaviest yet at 343.6 grams. The Snap-on performed nearly the same as the Knip X at 114 pounds. Leverage profile has a huge impact on how much effort it takes to cut through things and the tool with the shortest distance from the center of the axle or rivet to the opening for the cutters is the Irwin brand at 6.28 millimeters. The south wire is nearly the same at 6.48. The cobalt is 7.24 millimeters, but the handles are an inch shorter than the other brands. Channel locks is 8.01 millimeters, but the handles are slightly longer than the competition. So the channel locks came in on top at 73 pounds, Irwin 78, south wire 85, Klein tools 89, and Doral 96 pounds. The nails I used were made of low carbon steel and all of the pliers survived without any damage to the cutters. Deck screws are a lot harder than nails, so let's see how the pliers perform on deck screws. 344 pounds of pressure on the handles and the Illinois Industrial brand did not cut through the screw. Unfortunately, the Illinois Industrial 2 brand is no longer serviceable, the pliers are badly bent. The 7 inch cobalt pliers cut through the screw at 211 pounds compared to 158 for the nail. Very clean cut by the cobalt. There's a little bit more wobble in the handle now, but no damage to the cutters. The Craftsman performed slightly better than the Cobalt at 184 pounds compared to 102 pounds to cut through the nail. The cutters are still in great shape, but there's quite a bit of handle wobble. The Doyle did the best yet cutting through the screw at only 156 pounds compared to 96 for the nail. The Doyle brand did loosen up some and there's quite a bit of handle wobble. There's also a small amount of wear to the cutters. The DeWalt barely finished ahead of the Doyle at 154 pounds and moves into the lead. And the pliers are still in good shape. There's no visible damage to the cutters. And the Irwin did by far the best yet at only 135 pounds or 19 pounds less than the DeWalt. The amount of handle wobble seems unchanged and no damage to the cutters. The channel lock pliers moves into second place just behind the Irwin at 145 pounds. No damage to the cutters and the pliers are still in great shape. It took a lot of effort for the CS Osborne pliers to cut through the screw at 243 pounds. There's a small amount of damage to one of the cutters and the amount of handle wobble is about the same. It took 228 pounds of force from Milwaukee to cut through the screw. There's no damage to the cutters and they're still properly aligned. The Klein tools cut through the screw at 153 pounds. The pliers seem to be as good as new and there's no damage to the cutters. The Southwire brand did the best yet at only 133 pounds or two less pounds than the Irwin. The Southwire seemed as good as new and there's no damage to the cutters. It took 167 pounds of force for the Wea pliers to cut through the screw. No damage to the cutters and the pliers are as good as new. The Knipex needed 196 pounds to cut through the screw compared to 116 pounds to cut through the nail. No damage to the cutters and the pliers look as good as new. The Mac Tools needed 202 pounds to cut through the screw. Unfortunately, the screw did cause some damage to the cutters. There's also a small amount of handle wobble. It took 191 pounds for the Snap-on to cut through the screw. While the cutters are in great shape, unfortunately there's now a gap between the cutters when the jaws are fully closed. So the rivet or the pliers seem to be bent. 
The South Wire came in on top at 133 pounds, but the Irwin performed nearly as well at 135. Channel Lock 145 pounds, Klein Tools 153, DeWalt 154, and Doral 156 pounds. Let's test the durability of the cutters next, cutting to a 3 16 inch drill bit. Since the Illinois Industrial Tools didn't survive the last test, we'll go ahead and test the Cobalt first. And the Cobalt cut through the screw at 211 pounds, and it cut through the drill bit at only 220 pounds. No damage to the cutters. And the drill bit is just too much for the Craftsman, and the pliers broke at 268 pounds. And the Harbor Freight Doyle made very easy work of the drill bit at 207 pounds. The cutters are still properly aligned and in great shape. Unfortunately, the DeWalt pliers reached fair load at 327 pounds, and they weren't able to cut through the drill bit. One of the handles is bent, and the pliers no longer close properly. There's also some damage to the cutters. And the Irwin takes the lead from the Doyle by cutting through the drill bit at only 191 pounds. Very impressive! No damage to the cutters. With the high leverage design, the channel lock should cut through the drill bit at around 200 pounds. Unfortunately, the rivet used by the channel locks is a lot smaller than some of the other brands and it let go at 256 pounds. Unfortunately, the cutters on the channel locks experience some damage and they don't appear to be as hard as some of the other brands such as Cobalt, Doyle, and Irwin. And the cutters on the CS Osborne just aren't as hard as some of the other brands and it took nearly 295 pounds to cut through the drill bit. There's a small amount of damage to both of the cutters. Even though the Milwaukee uses a much more compact design compared to some of the other brands, it survived 274 pounds of pressure and cut through the drill bit. No damage to the cutters. And the Klein Tools did by far the best yet, cutting through the drill bit at only 161 pounds. There is a small amount of damage to the cutters. The Southwire brand made easy work of cutting through the drill bit at 206 pounds, but the Klein Tools holds on to the lead. The cutters on the Southwire still look as good as new. The Wea brand moves into second place behind the Klein Tools with a very impressive 188 pounds. The cutters still look as good as new. And the Knipex just won't give up and finally made the cut at 328 pounds. And there's a small amount of damage to the cutters on the Knipex pliers. Just like the Knipex, the Mac Tools just wouldn't give up and it cut through the drill bit at 358 pounds. Unfortunately, the Mac Tools cutters experienced quite a bit of damage. Unfortunately, the drill bit was just a little bit too much for the snap-on and the rivet let go at 345 pounds. There is a small amount of damage to the cutters. So the Klein Tools came out on top by cutting through the drill bit at 161 pounds, Wea finished second at 188, Irwin 191, South Wire 206, and Doyle 207 pounds. None of these tools are designed to cut through the sock adapter, but let's see if any of the brands are built strong enough to do so anyway, beginning with the Cobalt Tools brand. And the Cobalt brand peaked out at 462 pounds of pressure before the pliers finally broke. And the cutters left a pretty good sized dent in the socket adapter. One of the jaws of the Cobalt broke off, but the cutters on the Cobalt held up really well. The Doyle did even better than the Cobalt and began to fail at 550 pounds. The rivet broke and unfortunately there's quite a bit of damage to the cutters. So great job by the Doyle brand. And one of the jaws on the Irwin broke at 320 pounds. Even after all the extreme testing, the cutters on the Irwin are still in great shape. Very impressive. The CS Osborne put up a really good fight, but the handle finally snapped at 469 pounds. There's a small amount of damage to the cutters. So very respectable job by CS Osborne. One of the jaws broke off the Milwaukee pliers at 379 pounds. There's a small amount of damage to both of the cutters. Very good job by the Milwaukee when considering the compact size of the jaws. And the Klein Tools brand spit out the rivet at 485 pounds. The handles on the jaws did not bend or break. 485 pounds is a lot of force and it did cause some minor damage to the cutters. So very impressive job by the Klein Tools pliers. The South Wire put up a good effort but the jaws finally broke at 412 pounds. Even after coming into contact with the hardened socket adapter, the Southwire cutter still looked nearly as good as new. Very impressive. The Wea brand proved to be very tough and finally broke at 449 pounds. The pliers broke at the pivot point or the axle. 449 pounds is a lot of pressure and the cutters did experience some damage. And a Knipex brand refused to spit out parts or even break. Finally, at 579 pounds, the handle finally began to bend, but it never broke. Very impressive. The cutters are still in really good shape, especially when you consider the amount of weight applied to them. The Mac Tools brand really refused to give up, and it took 550 pounds before the jaws began to hyperextend. At a very impressive 985 pounds, after a large popping sound, the jaws were finally badly hyperextended. The hydraulic press had just about bottomed out, so I had to end the test. Not surprisingly, there was quite a bit of damage to the cutters, and the jaws were badly bent. Still very impressive that the pliers stayed in one piece. 
Most of the brands are more than durable enough for normal use, but if you're trying to find the most indestructible tool, the Mac Tools was badly damaged but stayed together at 985 pounds of force. The Knipex proved to be nearly as indestructible with a bent handle at 579 pounds. Dora broke at 550, Klein Tools 485, and CS Osborne 469 pounds. If you're looking for the pliers that are going to last the longest, the Knipex brand is very well built and will probably last the longest, but it's very expensive and it takes more effort to make a cut. For that reason, I like pliers that offer a little bit more leverage, which includes the Irwin as well as the channel locks, and they are far less expensive at only $18 and $21 respectively. If you're willing to spend a little bit more money, I really like the Klein Tools brand. It's a very nice set of pliers and will last a long time. I also like the Southwire. It has a very hard set of cutters, and it too it seems very durable. All the videos in this channel, including this one, are viewer suggested. So if you have a video idea, I hope you take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care and I look forward to next time.